Good morning, everybody. My name is David Kirkwood here with Jen Godey of Jen Godey Coaching Services. Today's topic is effective communication, body language, get to the point, and ask for what you need. So a little bit about us. I have over 15 years as an oil and gas professional, 10 years in leadership, very passionate about leadership and helping our community in this downturn. And so some of the things we have going on is we have our group coaching on this Thursday, July the 2nd, 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. Email us about this. So we've given four hour-long workshops over the last four weeks. This is our fifth this week. And so you're learning a lot of information and it's coaching that helps to install these things as a behavior. And so if you're curious about that, reach out to us. And I'm Jen Godet. I own Jen Godet Coaching Services. I am a business strategist and performance coach. I specialize in increasing confidence and leadership um, in your individual and helping you become the CEO of your life and your business. Uh, as David was saying, the installation of these new skill sets, is, it's basically about habit. And as coaches, we are masters of habit change. So we can help you just kind of implement each skill set and have them build on one another until all of a sudden you have this um, practice and it's just a part of who you are being. So we are super excited about having that for you. If you would like to contact us, please feel free to um, screenshot this so that you have our information. And David and I are both very passionate about helping our community. And so if you have questions, if you need extra support, please reach out to us. So why discuss effective uh, communication? Why communicate effectively? You'll have clearer direction. I really would like to try to figure this one particular thing out with you becomes let's discuss project A. You'll have better empathy with people by learning to read body language and being more cognizant of your own body language. You'll learn the specific triggers that people have that you can use to learn more about them. You'll have increased conciseness turning your verbose language into something that people understand better. You'll be more confident in your interactions as you practice. It will stop confusion. You'll know your audiences better. By reading them and really listening to them, you will understand their needs and you'll be communicating your needs better so that there's a better mutual understanding. There's a really great quote from Plato here, Wise men talk because they have something to say. Fools because they have to say something. So let's get started on body language. Did you know that communication, the words that you're saying is only 7% of the equation? Effective communication requires not just the words to be concise, correct, on point, direct, and clear, but it also requires tone of voice to be in alignment with what you're saying, and body language. So let's give you a for example. If David and I, go ahead and slump here. If David and I were like leaning back, slumped, and just, you know, kind of talking in this manner and not really showing that we're engaged, it doesn't matter what we say, you wouldn't listen. However, we've talked about this in prior workshops, your presence, commanding presence commands respect, and when you do that, when you show up and your shoulders are rolled back, you're sitting up, you're making eye contact, you're smiling, when you speak, it's gonna come across, across more confidently and it's gonna command the attention of people around you. People will actually lean in, sit up and listen. So body language, presence, the way you carry yourself and your tone of voice are so incredibly important. And now let's talk about your face. So. If your face needs deliverance and you're giving the most amazing content, but you are staring intently at somebody, they begin to feel like you are judging them or like they've done something wrong. They're not going to be listening and attending to what you say because in their heads, they're like, why is she staring me down? Why is he staring so intently? What did I do wrong? And if you smile and you lean in and you're engaging um, and someone gives you a response, and you're thinking to yourself, I can't believe they just said that, and you lean back and you roll your eyes, then they know that you don't really appreciate what it is that you're saying, that even if you verbal backtrack and say, hey, I hear that you're saying this, they've already seen the eye roll, so don't let this face need deliverance. Be sure to have your facial expressions that you are communicating in alignment with what you are saying. And so some things to, to pay attention to, 
look for an asymmetrical smile, I'll kind of demonstrate it here. If you see someone and they make this kind of half smile, I'm struggling to do it live right here, but that typically is indicative of contempt. And so learning to read micro expressions, if the smile is symmetrical or both of the corners of your mouth pull up, that's actual happiness. And so learning to read that when you're in one-on-ones with people, you'll see the subconscious messages coming across their face to learn what, what are they not liking or what do they really like as you're communicating. And you can take notes about what you're learning and as you're networking with people, start to det- learn what different, what things people like and what they don't like without them having to say verbally what those things are. Um, another thing is a wrinkled nose, which is like this. It's the expression for disgust. That's another thing that you can look for if you're saying in your interview and, and that you were happen to see that, that facial expression come up. Uh, you'll know quickly that you'll need to find a different route uh, and start communicating things a little bit differently. So let's talk about power postures. Um, when you were going in to have a, a conversation with somebody, if you were having some issues with your confidence, getting into a victory pose, right? We all know what that is, whatever that looks like. Or for, for women, it's the Wonder Woman pose a lot of times, the hands on hip, like really pulling into your power. Um, what that does is it engages your body and gets you moving into a feeling of confidence and allows you to have more powerful body language. If you're presenting on stage, for example, don't be, or, or presenting in front of a room, don't be falling in on yourself. This goes into what we were talking about immediately. Having the shoulders, shoulder blades back, having yourself in an engaging position, not with your arms folded, because that's telling you, telling everybody that you're not open to receiving, but getting yourself into a posture that is really indicative of, I am, I am comfortable in my skin, I'm going to present powerfully what I'm going to say, and I'm receptive to what I'm hearing. All of those things play into the nonverbal communication. So a little bit on power positions. When you walk into a room and you're getting into an interview setting, if you're sitting directly facing a person, it feels very formal. We call it the reprimand position. Get the chairs at 45 degree angles if you can to to make the, the conversation a little bit more informal so that you can relax more as you're presenting your information. The tallest chair at the end of the table or in the middle of the table is typically the power position, as well as how high up the chair is. The person who's sitting tallest in the room, people kind of subconsciously will gravitate to that person and identify them as the leader, almost regardless of what they're even saying or their actual position. Uh, So just that situational awareness that we talked about before is very important. Oh, my favorite. So once you've dialed in the body language, get to the points. It is not very simple, but it is, it is something that can be taught. When you're speaking to somebody, when you're asking for a job, when you're approaching a manager, an executive, when you're asking for a job, when you're asking for a raise, um, when you're asking for support, you want to come to the table with solutions. When you're talking about someone who's in a position to either hire you, make a decision about your position, um, your pay, any of those things, they don't want to hear a lot of problems. No one wants to come with a lot of problems because what happens when all you do is come with problems, they start to tune out and they see it as venting or as a not constructive communication. So if you come with solutions, hey, I have this potential solution. I've identified this problem. Here's the solution and the time required to get this result then other people are gonna sit up and listen. It may not be the ultimate result or solution that is chosen, but when you come to the table with solutions, people sit up and listen. Anyone who is trying to gain the next level or to switch into another career, when you're sitting across the table of a potential hiring manager, they wanna hear that you have solutions to the problems. They have a problem, they need somebody to fill this position. They wanna hear that you're the solution in a concise way. And executive summaries, we see this in our technical reports all the time, but it's worth talking about it a little more. Think 10 sentences become two. And so instead of giving 45 paragraphs worth of backstory, talk about the result. Talk about the situation in that first line item. 
Right, absolutely. And another way, if you are struggling with this, bullet point out what your sentences are and see where the common themes. That's a good way to help you get to the point. How to ask for what you need. You guys are all here on this because you wanna be able to ask for what you need. Maybe it's for a raise, maybe it's for your next opportunity, maybe it's to your network to ask for the opportunity to, to potentially get another job, whether in your industry or in another one. So what is most incredibly important, and we went into this in extensive detail last week, is own your worth. If you want to ask for a job, you have to believe that you're capable of doing the job. You have to believe that you absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, can perform the job duties before you walk into the interview. Because if you do not have that intrinsic confidence, that intrinsic value, then how on earth can you ask someone to hire you if you don't believe you can do the job? No matter what comes out of your mouth, it's not going to come forth um, authentically. Next, be direct. We just talked about this. Don't skirt. If you're sitting around the table with a group of friends and you need a job, ask who they can introduce you to so that you can actually make the introduction and have your foot in the door. Don't skirt around the issue. If you're talking around it and not getting to the point of your ask, no one understands that you're asking something. We must always be able to like swallow our pride, put our ego on the back burner and say, listen, I really am in a tight spot right now. I got let go two, two months ago. I'm really looking for my next opportunity. Who do you know that that could get me in the door? Finally, situational awareness. Know what's going on. If you're believing that you deserve a promotion or a raise, and you got the confidence up, you're ready, you've rehearsed it, you've practiced, you visualized something that we talked about a couple of sessions ago. Um, if you're there and you're ready and you walk into your manager and your manager is like really deep in the weeds looking at something, know that he's not, he or she is not receptive right now to whatever you have to say. Situational awareness. Is the person you're trying to come to the table with a bit able to focus on what you're saying? What is going on? If, if you're about to hit a round of layoffs, for example, this is not the time to go asking for your raise. You wanna let that settle because I can promise you if you've ever had to let anyone go, it is the most excruciating thing from, from an empathy standpoint. You don't wanna let good people go. Like, so your manager is not gonna be in a space, a headspace to even consider what's going on. So situational awareness is key. And then being transparent, I really like, leading with saying it. I want to be transparent here. When you say that, look for their body language. After saying it, do they lean in? Do, they, do their eyes kind of dilate? Are they, you know, focusing a little bit more? That's something to look for that engagement, that extra point of interest. And so a little bit on being direct. A lot of people are thinking is, well, I'm not comfortable with what they may think after I am direct. If you can look at some of our previous presentations, ask the question, did you die, right? Did you die after you asked that thing? Some of the best things in life happen by doing the uncomfortable thing. Just say it. You're not going to die if you say it. And then do not assume that they know because they do not. They are not mind readers. And I know we get, to, we get to that meeting. Well, they already know what I'm here for. They don't. Don't assume that. Now what? We have been talking and talking and talking. If you remember at the very beginning of this video, we talked about the difference between content and coaching. Content is what we've been doing here, giving you a lot of tips, things that you can do, imparting knowledge. But coaching comes in when we actually take action and move forward, when we break through wherever we're stuck and we come up with an action plan. So today we're here with some action steps. Let's talk about a couple. I would like to encourage you to pick one just one and start using it, try it on for size and use it for the next week. Let's talk about body language. I will watch three videos to learn how to read facial micro expressions next week. There are a ton of these on YouTube. You can just search it. There's a lot of awesome content out there. Start to learn to read the micro expressions. Micro expressions are the things that just flicker across somebody's face. Like it's really easy to see, oh, she's smiling. Oh, she's got a wrinkle. But the micro expressions are very, very subtle. It may be a very quick nose wrinkle or something like that. And, and really intently watching to learn is going to be um, incredibly important for you so that you can improve your communication.
Next, I will spend two minutes with my arms in victory pose for body mindset three days each week. What is this? This is to build confidence, to be able to present yourself. Remember, presence, commanding respect, so that people across the table will actually listen. So getting to the point, I will practice transforming 10 sentences into two per week for the next 30 days. And I want to draw attention that the concepts we've been talking about for the last five weeks are very simple. You may be asking yourself, I'm an engineer, I'm a technical professional, I have all this wealth of knowledge, 20, 30, 40 plus years of experience in very complex systems. What is this all about? There is a huge difference between knowing the thing and doing the thing, folks. This is the key. It's really not so much the content as it is doing the thing. And by breaking things down into actionable, measurable, achievable things that work with your tight schedules and will help you to install these behaviors so that you're actually doing them and not just knowing them. Then finally, asking for what you need. I will ask three people in my network for warm introductions to aid in my job search next week. And remember things like, if your audience is everyone, your audience is no one. Being very specific, being very direct in your ask is important. Yes, clarity and conciseness, could, it goes a hugely far away. So now what, we've talked about action steps for support and accountability if you're live and you feel comfortable go ahead and pop in the chat your action steps and then let's talk about accountability you guys have heard us for the last five weeks talking about accountability partners it is not your spouse it is not your best friend it is not somebody who is um emotionally attached to you in any way shape or form why because we all have blind spots each and every one of us have blind spots and so you want someone who is an objective third party to be an accountability partner so that when you are not really doing what you say you're going to do they can say hey how's that thing going have you been working on uh your conciseness have you been working on 10 sentences into two and you're going to have to say mm, no maybe i better get on that that is actually how habit change happens when we're talking about all of these soft skills you may be thinking oh i'm an introvert i'm not really good at communication oh this networking thing i don't really feel comfortable doing this i have all this knowledge why don't people just understand if you are not clearly, effectively communicating what you need, it doesn't matter all the knowledge in the world that you have. You've got to be able to bring it into the table. You have to be able to be confident when you bring it up. You have to be able to clearly articulate what it is that you need or that you're asking for, and you need to come with a solution. So having that accountability partner can really help you to gain these skills and it becomes habits. And as your habits, they're just about who you are. And we stack skill set on top of skill set on top of skill set every single week with that support and accountability. And all of a sudden, it's just who you are to show up, to confidently present yourself in any situation, not just your subject matter expert, and to get that next opportunity to open the door to see your upward mobility in your career or whatever it is that you're hoping to achieve. And so some the last income upcoming workshop in this series, the last of six, is going to be on leadership, the power of others, letting go of control, and self-mastery. So join us next Saturday for that one. Also, join our group coaching, which is ongoing. If this occurs Thursdays, 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, the cost is 25 bucks a person. In these small groups, it's an excellent value as an introduction to coaching to install the behaviors that will change your life. Reach out to us if you're interested at david at jengodecoaching.com or comment in the chat here. And I just want to point out that people spend tens of thousands of dollars to instill some of the things that we've brought to you. Um, the value cannot be understated. Coaching is something completely different than sitting in a workshop or sitting in a seminar. It is actually the act of becoming who it is that you want to become, of instilling the behaviors that you want to instill and truly moving forward. Um, and all coaches have coaches. David and I are coached extensively on this. It has been an ongoing journey. It's not like you say, oh, I'm going to communicate effectively, concisely tomorrow. It's going to be a journey. So if you're looking to join, this is an opportunity that is very, very temporary. We're offering it right now because of the situation. Um, and normally the value of this is up to $1,000 per month. So be sure to, if you're thinking about it, check this out and, and don't 
um, miss out on this opportunity. So the secret to change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. We want to be installing those new behaviors to go to that next place that we're seeking. Uh, I, I believe that a person is always in works. A person can always grow, can always achieve. And so I come from a place of being coachable. If you do have questions about what any of this means, please email us, reach out to us. Again, we're very happy to have a 20 minute conversation with you to learn about your specific situation and speak through it. Absolutely. Once again, if you need our, con our contact information, it's on the screen. If you are catching the replay, you will have all that in involved in the um, subject of the YouTube link. Uh, and we are here for you. We are here to support you and we are here to help you break through any of the challenges that you're facing to get you moving powerfully forward to be successful in the goals that you hope to achieve. It has been our absolute pleasure in sharing this with you today. We look forward to seeing you for the last installment of this series and we are going to field questions live now um, we'll end the the recording in order for them to have their privacy and we will see you next week thank you everybody